Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from the Automator, and um, someone posted a comment on our other video about compiling scripts, and they wanted to know about in V2. So it's very, very similar, but I thought, that let's talk to a couple other things as well in compiling your AutoHotKey scripts. That's right. So remember that there are two ways that you can compile a script. One of them is through the graphical user interface, which is this one. And the other is just by right-clicking on a file, and if you go to the menu, um, and I'm just looking at the old menu, I'm in Windows 11. So if you right click on Windows 11, you have this menu, you would have to click on show more options. But if you click on this one, the compile script by itself, it will use the last saved settings that you had in your graphical user interface. So those two things do the same thing. The only thing is that the GUI allows you at least to change some settings before compiling and whatever is saved here you can use this save button to save your settings and whatever is saved then the next time if you right click and just see say compile script without the gui it just goes ahead and compiles without showing this screen right so compiling for v1 or v2 there is no real difference except for what the base file for your compiled script is. So this hk2exe, if you put it, if you put it where it's supposed to be installed, um, which is the C, well, wherever auto hotkey is installed, you just have to go to that folder where, where auto hotkey is installed. And uh, if you create a folder called compiler and you put hk2exe in there, and it automatically goes ahead and reads all the versions that you have from AutoHotKey, and it would list them for you here, just like that. So that the reason why I, I can see here uh, 2.1 Alpha 14 and the 2.0.19 is just because I have those folders here. If you don't install AHK2EXE in that in that location, then you can use the browse folder, and it, you you just tell it what is the file that you want to use for your compilation. So you can compile v1, v2, it doesn't really matter. Um, to compile, once you select that, you can uh, change the icon of the file when you're compiling it to something. So for example, what I do in one of my scripts is that if I compile it, um, the compiled code would use this icon right here and the executable will use this icon right there, right? So that's something that, that's what how you, what you do with the custom icon right here. And uh, so we switch to V2, let's say V2.0.19. I select the file that I want to compile, whatever it is. And then I click on convert, that's it. That's the process, right? Now, what if I don't want to be opening this GUI, but I do want to set up the icon and other things? Like, for example, if I go to one of the scripts that we have created called Prompt Assistant, all right? So let's go here. Let's go to uh, Prompt Assistant. You will see that our binary, our compiled version, as I mentioned before, it has its own little icon. But if you right click on it and you go to your properties here, you have additional information here in the details tab. And one of the things that we can see here is the product name, call prompt assistant, the file version of it, the product version, and other things like the copyright or the file description and so on. All of those little things, you can change them whenever you want to whatever you want. Um, but this graphical user interface doesn't help you with that because in here you can only change the icon. So how can you change those? Well, on the script itself, like on the code, you can set a group of sort of directives for AHK to EXE. They are in essence, just a comment. So they're normally a comment because they start with a semicolon. So that doesn't affect your code whatsoever. Um, but it, you have to follow a set of rules. And if you want more information about that, you just open the help file 
and on the help file, just look for AHK to EXE, right? And this is what you could also look for, compiler directives. And there's a bunch of them that you can use. You can add resources, change the binary file, and so on and so forth. But there is one specific one, which is the one that is more, the one that I use the most, is the set property. And there's a set of properties that you can set, and each of them would change something. Set copyright, set description, set file version, set internal name, and so on and so forth. So these are a set of things that you can use this at hk to exe then the property set whatever property it is and the value for it and when you compile whether it's from the gui or without the gui these guys are going to be read from the script and they're going to be then added into the file on the uh on the properties or details tab that i was just showing you earlier so great little um piece of information there if you want your executable to look a little bit more professional or you want to keep track of these things automatically then you can go ahead and set those details and uh that's the way how you do it so the other really important thing is uh if you go back to the compiler script uh, that we didn't talk about was the um compression right right you know, so you know, yeah you can do that, but just know you're really much more likely to be flagged as a virus as well. That's true. So there are certain reasons why antiviruses flag something as a virus. Of course, if the program is a, a virus and they grab it and put it in their database, as soon as you try to run that, they know it's a virus, so it's flagged. In other cases, the program is not a virus and they still flag it as a potential problem for you, which for end users, it means the same as a virus. You know, like for them, you just see a notification from an antivirus and then you right away think it's a virus. But the secondary ways how you get flagged is, okay, I don't know what this executable is and it's not signed. So that's one of the reasons why you might get flagged. If your executable is not signed, and let me show you what that looks like. Here in Auto Hotkey, if I go to one of the versions, you will see this UIA version. If you look at the properties, you will see that it has a, what is called a digital signature. So it has a digital signature, and it's kind of like validated in your computer. The other one by itself doesn't have that digital signature. It's empty, as you can see. And because of that, some antiviruses might flag it as a virus just because they say, oh, it's not signed. It's not like trusted. So for that reason, you get flagged. Beside that, when you're compiling, you can compress the thing so you can make it smaller. And sometimes you can actually simply encode it in a way that it's not easy for somebody to just look at the code and say, oh, this is what he's doing. As soon as you do that, as, you, as soon as you compress it, Antiviruses have a little bit of a hard time trying to know what the file actually does. So they preemptively just go ahead and flag it as a virus just because they don't know what it's doing. So just know if you are using these for uh, sending it to clients and so on, Auto Hotkey by itself, just compiling it, it might be flagged as a virus just because it doesn't have a signature. And on top of that, if you go ahead and compress it with one of these guys, it the chance gets you know a little bit higher, and you probably don't want that. So it is use that with care. You just if you know that it's not going to be a problem, just go ahead and do it. Um, but if you do, then you just should know what happens when you turn this on. Now to do this, you do have to install those compressors. So there's UPX in here. It says not found, not not found. And the same for the MPress, right? So as you can see, it directs you on what to do. You have to go to the help menu, go to check for updates. And once everything is there, um, it's going to kind of like look at each individual program you will see in a second. And for each, it will have a checkbox. And you will see that for others that are not in my computer, it would just allow me to check them 
and say install, you will see a button here where it says update. If I check those three and hit update, it would just go ahead and install them. So in that case, if you need one of the, comp the pressors, um, the packagers, or however they are called, then you just install it. And then from there, you can use it in here um, and convert your executable and compress it at the same time. Yeah, I, I have a really good video showing how, you know, I compressed something with, I think, just a message box and the antivirus score from virus total went up so much. It, it's it's hilarious because they don't really look in the files like they, you know, again, they, they kind of they don't know what it is. And that's basically what they're telling you is like, hey, it could be a virus. Right? Yeah. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video if you learned something here. It really helps us out. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye.